Hello, and yes, that's right, it's another SSD test here for the PS5. And in today's SSD test, once again, just like the others, this was recorded way, way, way back in early to mid-September. And therefore, it was recorded in the beta phase of the software for PS5. Although SSDs are now available for everyone to use on their PlayStation 5 system, and indeed, the support of these SSDs and the performance of them is exactly the same in the beta and outside of it, I did think it was important to let you guys know that this was recorded on the beta and not in the full release so it doesn't impinge the results at all but I just wanted to keep that clear. Let's begin the video. Hello and welcome back and that's right we are bench testing another SSD on the PS5 on the beta 3.1 and today it's the Firecuda 520 that's right not the Firecuda 530 but the Firecuda 520 this is the um, under uh, recommended minimum uh, of 5,500 megabytes per second SSD from Seagate. It was their first generation PCIe Gen 4x4 SSD that came out before the 530 in um, summer of 2021. And this SSD, we're going to be bench testing five games from our latest series of tests. We're looking at Borderlands 3, we are looking at Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, we're looking at In Rays of the Light, we're looking at Subnautica, and we're looking at Oddworld. And all of these games are currently residing on the internal SSDs. You can see there at 251 gigabytes of data, there is all of our games. We move them over, we even moved over the PS4 data, even though we're not going to use it, it's good to have it there. So without further ado, let's go straight into this. Let's load Borderlands 3, the PS5 version, and we're going to test how it compares with the internal SSD in terms of load time. So let's do it. Three, two, one. Now, as we're loading it here, I know these videos are a bit repetitious looking at the same games but different SSDs, but I'm trying to help everyone choose the right SSD upgrade for their needs. Once it comes out of beta and in full release, more people are going to be buying SSDs and people are going to want to know what are the best ones that work. Uh, right now, the next thing we're going to see is Claptrap moving on the bottom of the screen. Other tests, see how far Claptrap makes it when he pops out from the left-hand side of the screen. We want to see as little of Claptrap as possible. So we still saw his whole body there, but still, it's still a very quick loading time there. Still not the quickest we've seen yet. The quickest in all of my testing so far was a near draw between the WD Black SN850 and the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. But here we are on the title screen, and we're going to make our way into our save game. Now, this save game is going to be in Borderlands 3. Um, in the early stage of the game, or at least an early location, I've actually completed the game already, um, and it is on Pandora, one of the early bits. Let's count in. Three, two, one. And we're going to load in and drive around a large area of the map to see if we can force the game into doing low textures or to go into the game and not load in some assets correctly. That's what we're looking for. That's the sort of things we're trying to test this device into doing we want the um, game to have difficulty keeping up with activity there on the screen as we make our way around the whole environment in order to see if this ssd can handle this game just as well as that of the internal ssd that we've already tested also there's some guy here shooting at me i think we should definitely make a point of killing him so as we move around into this, I'm seeing no drop in frame rate. The game's running lovely and fast. We're seeing no low textures there. None of the graying textures that if you played this game on a PS4, not a PS4 Pro, would have a tendency to show. What we're seeing here is lovely examples of this game running at full fidelity there with all of the extra bells and whistles of this featured version having. But for now, I think we can do that. We can now make our way back to the title screen where we can load into our next game so we're seeing no problems there in the loading of this game let's head in and go into our next game star wars jedi fallen order now again this game we're taking advantage of two different save scenarios we've got low loading the whole game into a new save spot and loading from kashik uh, we're going to be loading in there and with that kashik uh, mission there we're just going to see how well the game loads into that whole new range of assets from one with no recycling where possible um we're not counting the loading of the game as you see here on screen 
largely because these are unskippable and it's connecting to the EA server. Consequently, there are just too many variables to make this accurate to compare against the internal SSD and it's not really fair, so we're not going to include this bit. We're going to compare this against the internal SSD once we boot the game proper from that save spot there and we load straight in. So we'll be at the title screen very shortly with any luck and then we can compare them left for right. So let's go in there, let's go with continue, three, two, one. Quite long loading in this game, it's a real bummer, but I'll be honest, I thought the PS5 version of this game would have faster loading, and it is faster, but by no means a noticeably larger amount there. Now, again, comparing this how it looks against the other game, let's make our way up here. Let's get a bit of light there with the lightsaber to be going on with. And what we can do is start making our way into the next area of the game. So let's go there, we're there and ready. And here we go, we're on this part, and we can go ahead and load the game proper. Yes, we're getting absolute beat down there, but it's still seemingly doing exactly what I'd like it to do. And for now, I think those assets are loading just fine for me. And I think for now, we can definitely count this as a successful load, if not me being a fairly terrible Jedi right now. But let's make our way in. We'll head back down to the meditation area and from there we're going to be able to see how uh, the game loads in that mission that we're going to be utilizing there. So let's go ahead and run to the next area. And again, we're going to load into Kashyyyk because that's the one that we've been utilizing for the other videos. And from there, we'll just play a couple of rounds of that just to double check that it's going to load in all properly. Let's let it load up. And we'll count in from the loading of the Kashyyyk level. Let's go for it there. Three, two, one. Again, very so for a smaller contained area here, I'm very surprised how long this takes. But nonetheless, here we are on this test area here. So let's go ahead and load this up. Again. Absolutely fine. Sorry about all the tapping of the controller there while I'm doing this. But for now, that's no graphical problems there, no drop in frame. There's a lot more enemies here, so we can do a much better job of um, assessing this game, loading some of these assets a lot more quickly. But again, no texture problems when we look around the arena. Things are absolutely fine there. And for me, that's still running pretty fine, even if I'm doing a terrible job in this game here in what we're doing but i think for now we can say that that's all well and good and we can exit this and make our way into the third test here we go into this one in rays of the light again we're only bench testing this game from loading individual saves so we're not going to count any of this boot here we can make our way into the later segment of the game um, again, lovely little indie title this. I'm genuinely looking forward to playing through this game after I've done all of these tests. If there's one thing of all of the games that I've been testing for all of these SSDs, this is the one I've kind of been looking forward to playing the most. I'm a bit of a sucker for a walking simulator and this one has really got me. I'm quite looking forward to seeing how this goes. Everybody's gone to Rapture again. If you've not played it, try it. Incredible game. Anyway, here we go, we'll make our way onto the title screen and from here we'll load segment three. We'll count in three, two, one. Nice and quick loading, lovely stuff. Again, do remember we are using an SSD that is under the recommended minimum right now. So again, let's look at all those assets, they're all loaded in nice and easily. There's no block data problems there. There's no drop in frame rate, there's no low textures. From what we're seeing there that's absolutely lovely stuff as i was saying do bear in mind this is an ssd that is uh, 500 megabytes per second less than the recommended 5500 that sony issued um, in this beta program maybe things will be different when it's fully released but right now this is still under the mark i think it will run pretty much all the games these days absolutely fine but it's later in your system's life that may prove different i'm just looking at all of the textures 
to double check that textures aren't loading in on low poly or that we've got the low quality textures as the SSD had difficulty keep them up but absolutely no problems there we've got all of the surrounding environment all of the different buildings and stuff like that all around us and on top of that we've got no drop in frame rate and none of the textures are being poorly exchanged as we move through the environment between low medium and high uh, quality all the way through i saw a pop item there but i do think that is more of a game issue we have noticed that before with that item so again that's more of a game problem it's not the ssd but to me that's absolutely fine and the game seemingly has run as normal so now we can load into another segment this is segment four let's count in three two one and this is a segment that we choose to use because it does a very good job of close-knit textures it's an internal environment here and again we can have a good look at a lot of these textures all the way through from the small to the big uh, we've got a slight drop in frame rate there um, not too sure about that uh, in terms of that dropping of frame rate but again prepare to overlook that just this once but again i'll probably mention that in the summary later on but for now it's seemingly loading quite well there's a slight drop in frame rate as i rotate the character i know it's a bit pixelated there while you're looking at the compressed version on your top right of the screen but for me it's still running absolutely fine apart from a couple of little bumps there along the way that are worth touching on later on but as we move into this area we've got lots of the water effects there with the light bouncing off it as well as a lot of the shadow textures and the lighting of course but for me that's still running absolutely fine and i think if we look at the tiles we've got no problem there in terms of textures being not exchanged outright i think this is absolutely fine there I'm prepared to sign off on that so let's go into our second to last game which is subnautica something we've talked about before subnautica again we're going to load into um, a fresh open world game this is a survivalist game and it's a sandbox game and we're loading into the creation mode here at the bottom so again let's count in three two one as we see here on the left hand side of the screen we're able to actually see um, individual assets being introduced blob by blob which is always good to see because it gives us a unit of measurement that we can compare against there's even a timer on there in case my timer is not good enough for you and it will take us into the game to see how these compare against the internal ssd now it's running on the fire cuda 520. now let's go up instead of going down for a change and if we have a look around again we've got all of those graphics all of those textures of the sea there all the water effects there lovely stuff let's jump in and start making our way through this underseas world so right now i'm not seeing any texture problems to my mind it's still moving at a lovely pace there all the way through again no problems in terms of some of these textures being quite close by things seemingly running at a very good pace there for us and again no low textures being introduced no pop there of any of the graphics along the seabed none of the animals popping in out of existence it's running pretty well for me i would say this is running absolutely fine and again we're moving at quite a pace because we've gone for the water area at the top so we can take advantage of that speed boost to really scroll through this area quite quickly but for now no texture problems no pop everything's absolutely fine and i think from here we can make our way into our final game which is odd world soul storm so let's load into it there we're gauging this one loading from the title screen and for me this is a game although it's a 2.5d platformer there's actually quite a lot of lighting effects shadow effects and set pieces to keep an eye on so that's why we end on this one let's go for it three two one as we make our way into the game uh, we can have a little look and see how it compares against the internal ssd and then get ready for running through the area that felt near enough identical to the internal ps5 ssd which is lovely to see this is of course an exclusive ps5 title which really really surprised me because i imagine this would run on the ps4 and i don't know whether they're doing that to stop people buying it on the ps4 and go for a ps5 who can get one these days um but Again, this is a game that I think could potentially run 
on an older system, we did see a drop in frame rate there. I'm going to repeat that segment because I want to see if that drop in frame rate um, is as um, repeatable as we just saw it. Because I've not seen a drop in frame rate there before. Let's try and get some pace so we can stay ahead of the curve there. But for now, it seems to be running absolutely fine. Sorry about the clicking of the controller there. We'll start closing in on the later portion of the game there. Uh, we didn't see that drop in frame rate that time, but I definitely saw it before. And it might be another reason why there was another drop in frame rate there as well. So this is definitely a present thing here, regardless of this being a relatively simple 2D 2.5D platformer. Still, nonetheless, I'm going to wrap things up there as we move the data back to the internal SSD. And we can talk about a lot of the things that we've learned and seen today. Let's come out of the game and go from there. So let's move those back to the internal SSD for future testing. And we'll summarize what we've seen. So moving that data back. First and foremost, I still don't quite think you should go for drives like this. Um, notwithstanding the drops in frame rate that happened in, you know, at least two games that we saw here on multiple occasions, there's still the idea that right now Sony wouldn't recommend a minimum 5,500 megabytes per second without a reason. Even if current games that are being released right now aren't able to push the PS5 and therefore not, you know, you might not need 5,500 megabytes per second sequential read to match the internal PS5 SSD might not seem urgent now. I think it's something that may come into effect within the next few years. And if you're buying an SSD upgrade for your PS5, there's every possibility you are doing it so that you want to have a bit of longevity. You want this storage for the next few years and therefore you want to spend right. And that's why, despite the fact that the sub 5000 SSDs like the Silicon Power US 70, the Sabrent Q4 and this, the Firecuda 520, all seem to run okay. I still wouldn't recommend them long term, or at least wait until the software update is no longer in beta and the ability to add M2 SSD storage is far more readily available to you. So do stay tuned for when that happens, as things may be more regimented on compatibility lists as well as drives that are supported. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know these are quite repetitive looking at the same games, but it's the only way we can keep things fair between different SSDs and have any kind of real system here. I hope if you're watching this in the future and Sony have enabled the PS5 update that you are going to find this useful in choosing the right SSD to upgrade your console, whether it's 2021, 2022, or whatever's happening with you guys in 2023, do let me know in the comments. Do click like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to learn more. We've got loads more SSDs to go through. We're going through 18 in total with at least three tests per drive. So there's lots to get through. And of course, take advantage of the links in the description to all of my top recommended SSDs, my top recommended heat sinks, and lots of guides and resources that I've created on this subject. And finally, take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's manned by two guys, me and Eddie the web guy, we will answer all of your queries. Anything to do with data storage, networking, Thunderbolt, RAID, NAS, DAS, hard drives, SSD, you name it. It's completely free and impartial. We do nothing with your email and we answer every email. Just might take us an extra day or two because we're humans. We've got lives. Thanks, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.